13. A place of bones. Tonki and I stand in front of the locked catacomb ticket office with its chipped green paint. Not that you can clearly see the colour in the yellow electric street lamps because it has become evening. Locked, eh? he says, nodding at the door then striking a match on it and cupping his hand to keep the digital breeze from blowing out his cigarette. I say, yeah, hence me paying you to open it. Ah, smart guy. He jabs a tobacco-stained finger at me to emphasise his joke, grinning to show his uneven teeth. Everything about him is overdone, like a pantomime character. Then, with a flourish, he pulls out a leather wallet containing thin pieces of metal. Lockpicking kit. I raise an eyebrow. You don't say. Give me a sec. He fumbles with the lock, inserting the lockpick and twisting it. Then it clicks. With a triumphant smile, he steps back and says, I've got 250 in lockpicking. Impressive. Above us and around, the starlings settling in their thousands in the trees for the night. Yeah, thank you. He didn't pick up on my ironic tone, it seems. Tongi leans in and tries the door handle. It opens inward with a squeak. There, he says. I even opened the door for you. I look in and hesitate. Magneto's in here. He's a pretty powerful dude, and this could be dangerous. I hesitate, but I can't leave Sally to his dubious mercies. Tongi's waiting. He's maybe looking for adventure. He's a player, after all. He says, you need me for anything else? I suck my teeth. You fancy coming in there with me? Catacomb? Sure. Never been in before. I like new things. Seems like Tongi's not the kind of guy to mull things over, but I'm glad. A hundred francs, though, he adds. As far as I'm concerned, money isn't an issue. I'm sure Guy Philby and the Order of Light are good for it. I say, have you got a gun? He looks around warily, then lifts his long brown coat and reveals a shoulder holster. From it, he half extends a pistol, the metal gleaming dully in the streetlights. My pistol skills tell me it is an Aster Unceta y Cia, SA, Modelo 400, a Spanish pistol. Nine millimetre calibre made from 1921. I didn't know I knew that. Good. And a flashlight. He lifts the other side of the coat and taps his inside pocket. You've got a lot of things in that coat, I say. You'd better believe it. It pays to have the gear to hand. Let's go in, I say. After you. Tongi extends his hand in a flourish. I look at the door, shrug and tow it inwards with the tip of my shoe. Tongi sweeps the beam of his torch around the deserted cabin. Nothing. From what I can see, it's a regular tourist-type thing. There's a ticket desk and a place for standing in line. You got a flashlight, Tongi says. I nod and get my electric torch from my inventory. With a push of the thumb, I switch it on and the bold yellow beam sweeps the room behind the door. I say, someone said there was an infestation in the catacombs. Of what? Tongi asks. Not sure. He seems unconcerned. He has a flashlight in one hand and his Spanish pistol in the other. OK, then, let's go. We step into the ticket hut and Tongi closes the door behind us. It clicks. Not locked, he says. Want me to lock it? I feel uneasy locking the door behind us, so I say, I doubt anyone will follow us in. He shrugs, as you like. I look around with the aid of my flashlight. It's all very unremarkable. Nicely done by Miskatonic because it looks the part down to the dirt and cobwebs in the corners, but nothing much of interest in here. Tongi places beam over the far end. There's a chain barrier with a sign that says closed, but it's a single chain and can be stepped over or under. Behind that, a metal spiral staircase painted black leads down. Down there, I guess, Tongi says. I clear my throat, I suppose. He grins again. You first. My turn to shrug. Fine. I'm strangely nervous. I walk to the chain with the sign and lift up the metal link so I can bend under it. Light switch, Tonky says, and flicks it. Instantly, a string of multicoloured light bulb sparks up and illuminates the way down the spiral stairs that disappear far below. Just like Christmas, Tonky says. Not much like my Christmases, I say, and take the first step down. My foot clangs on the first cast iron step, then the next. I shiver. Is it cold in here, or is it me? It's cold. Must be all the cold bones lying down there in the cold rock. I thought you'd said you'd never been. Never have. But I know what it is. It's an ossuary. 
They piled all the skulls and bones in here that they took out from the old graveyards of Paris when they remodelled the city. In nice patterns too, from the photographs. We clang our way down the stairs, me in front, torch in hand, casting light on my steps. It's a long way down. Lots of iron stairs. It gets colder too. My breath billows in the torchlight every time I exhale. Further and further we descend, our way lit prettily by the coloured bulbs. They don't give a ton of light, but I guess it's part of the tourist experience to walk through the catacombs in the gloom. A groan rises up from below. I pull out the Walther PPK. What was that? I ask. Tongi's not phased. Zombie? It would be the place you'd expect them. I don't know. Let's be careful. I sure as hell don't want to die down here. It gets colder. It's really icy now, and I'm shivering under my coat. Tongi's breath is coming out in clouds. The gun in his hand shakes with cold. We reach the bottom of the deep stairs. The rock walls are rhymed with frost. I slip as I step forward. Tongi shoots out an arm to catch me, but I wasn't falling. Careful, Tongi says. Thanks. Don't thank me. I only did it because you haven't paid me yet, he says. I think he's smiling. Certainly his yellow teeth are gleaming in the torchlight. I say, yes, I did. I sent you the money when we were upstairs. Oh, I didn't notice. I don't care if you fall and break your neck then, he guffaws. Funny, I say. I look around the frigid room, my warm breath billowing out into the cold air. We're in some kind of reception area. This is probably where the guides assemble the tourist groups once they arrive down the spiral staircase and brief them before going on into the catacombs proper. There's a door, Tonky says. He shines his light on the iron door that blocks our way. Just then I hear a loud groan from behind that door. It's our friend, he says, old groaner. He laughs at his own joke, which is just as well because I'm not finding it funny. Again, fear creeps over me. I have a pang of doubt. Is Sally even down here? Am I wasting my time on this when her life could be at risk? Tongi goes to the door and tests the handle. It's not locked. O open it. I stand with my Walther in one hand and my flashlight in the other. Tongi nods and shoves the door open. It's very dark in there. I can't see anything, I say. He steps back in my direction and shines his torch beam into the room we've just opened. There's a groan and a zombie lumbers out of the dark at me. It's fast. I've never seen them run before. I blast away with my Walther PPK, but the pierce damage from the bullets just smacks into the running zombie and doesn't even slow it down. It hits me and sends me sprawling, knocking my pistol from my hand. I'm winded on the floor, weaponless, and the zombie bites me. The zombie bites you for 50 damage. Health, 950 out of 1,000. Zombie infects you with typhus. I roll and back up, but the zombie swipes me again. Zombie bites you for 60 damage. Health, 890 out of 1,000. Zombie fails to infect you with random disease. I try to get my sword, but it just jumps on me, weighing me down. I hear Tongi blam blamming away at the zombie uselessly. Then I remember my magic. I have a spell, Thrust. I hardly use it. Now is the time. I mentally select the spell, looking at the snapping zombie and aim. Thrust. The zombie shoots off and slams against the far wall, looking partly broken. I jump to my feet, snatch out my sword and run at the zombie. I slash down at it. The pierce damage from the pistols didn't work, but the slash damage from the sword does the trick. You damage zombie for 200. A few slashes and it's dead. I get the XP. All is well. I stand there breathing heavily. That was close. Guns don't work on them, eh? Tonky says. No, wrong sort of damage. They're immune to pierce damage. Sword work, though? Yes. Very impressive what you did shoving the zombie across the room. Was that magic? Yeah. Thrust. He whistles. Cool. Let's go on. I peer cautiously into the gloom. I turn on my clairsentience to see if I can get any indication of magic. Nothing here glows. Not magic, but not evil either. That is a help, I suppose. I turn the skill off. Could be more zombies, Tonky says. I figured that. A distant groan confirms our suspicion. I fetch my pistol from where it clattered on the floor and put it away. I have my sword in my hand. At least I'm prepared now. And now the bones begin. There are heaps of skulls and heaps of femurs all piled up along the edges of the passageway. There are skulls set out like a rockery with femurs and tibias setting out a pattern in raised beds. It's so cold. 
The bones glisten with frost. This is fucked up, Donkey says. I grunt. I'm still not convinced we're on the right trail for Sally. A zombie rushes us from the right, but I'm ready. I slash and cut, and as an afterthought, I pick up the head. I might be able to turn the quest in twice and get a double reward from André Breton. Handy, you got a sword. I wish I had one. We passed a spade back there. You could use that. It's got an edge after all. Really? Okay. Tonky goes back while I wait and he returns with a rusty spade. He's looking at it sceptically. Maybe, he says. He gives it to me. This any use? I check out the weapon. Spade. Slash damage. One to four damage times blade skill. I hand it back. Right kind of damage anyway. Ready? I ask. He nods and we advance deeper into the catacombs. It's still cold, but not colder. There's ice here and there, and I nearly slip again on the floor. I have the sword in my right hand and the torch in my left. More zombies, three of them. Tongi decapitates one with his spade and laughs out loud. Keep the head, I say. What? There's a quest, if you turn in enough of them. And then I see a black shape on the floor. I shine my beam on it. A hat, Tongi says. It's a black cloche hat with a silver rose design on it. Without doubt, it's Sally's hat. My heart lifts. She has been here. Then almost instantly drops again. To lose her hat and not pick it up. She must have been struggling. It's my friend's, I say. You have a friend, says Tongi. Another joke. I ignore him. We're here to find her. Ah, right. Good, he says. He doesn't care. He's getting cash and XP from the zombies. Come on. There are corridors and passages going many ways. We come to chambers and they have three passages radiating from them. I have no idea which way to go. I stop. He says, You seem tense. For fuck's sake, I bell. Of course I'm fucking tense. My friend's down here with Magneto. Magneto, he says, I know him. What? I say. Tongi says, He's a big guy now. He was a serious player when I was only casual. He levelled up a lot, but a long time ago when the game was first out, we used to quest together when there wasn't that many players in Paris. It doesn't say much for you that he's your friend. Why, he's a decent guy. Or he was. He's a thief and a kidnapper. Tongi shrugs. Whatever. But he's down here, eh? He peers. This is his hideout? Apparently. We walk on, we halt, we look around. There are so many tunnels. I realise we're lost in this labyrinth of bones. I hear groans from zombies near and far, but I'm not worried about them. Ice shines on the rock walls. Ice glistens in the eye holes of grinning skulls. Know where we're going, he says. No. Ah, he rubs his stubbly chin. Know how to get back? No. Hmm. Hmm, what? Could be a problem, not knowing how to get back. We could die down here, really, I mean... Check your HUD. I do. The map of the catacombs is all fogged out. That's pretty irritating. We've got to find Sally. You, your friend? Yes. Girlfriend? No. What the hell difference does that make anyway? Mm, just asking. I don't reply. I've got a headache. I don't know if it's virtual or not. I suppose it doesn't matter. Tongi says, There are some kind of marks on the ground. It's just before that tunnel entrance. I point the torch beam. There are dragging marks in a thin layer of ice on the floor. Could be a zombie, he says. You don't say. Yeah, what else would it be? I was being ironic. Oh, I sigh deeply. Let's go that way. As we walk forward, Tongi points his torch upwards to the lintel above the tunnel entrance. See that? There's a sign. There have been various tourist information signs around the place. Some chambers have names. This one says... To Our Lady of the Sorrows, abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Sounds ominous, Tonky says. We've got to go somewhere, I reply. Wonder who she is, Tonky says. Don't know, don't care. That was the only tunnel that had any sign that anyone had been down it recently. It's our best bet. But I shiver involuntarily. Suddenly, Tonky hurls his spade over my shoulder to hit the rock floor with a crash in front of me. What the hell? Didn't you see that? What? Like a, a caterpillar thing, a black furry caterpillar, squiggling over the floor. Pick up your spade. Cautiously, he ventures forward and recovers his spade. He flicks his beam around the tunnel. Look, there's another. I see a black, hairy caterpillar thing about two foot long, shuffling across the floor. It goes down a side passage. 
you see something mildly disturbing. Sanity now 75 out of 100. Damn, I don't want to be losing too much sanity. There's another! Tongi directs his torch to a bank of leg bones. A big caterpillar bigger than the first is curled there. As he illuminates it, it rears up, showing a hundred wriggling legs and some kind of slime-filled hole at the top that might serve as a mouth. Tongi fires at it and it dies, twitching. The sound of the gun is so loud in the enclosed tunnel that it echoes in my head and sets my ears ringing. But the noise summons more caterpillars. They rise up in large numbers from among the bones. They must nest just under the femurs and skulls. Jesus, Tongi shrieks, falling back and blazing away. He kills a few caterpillars, but more of them surge out from the piles of bones, blackening the floor like a hundred dropped maggots. I jump back and fire. I fire and fire. The sound rolls like thunder round the cavern. You damage loveworm for thirty. You kill loveworm. You are awarded thirty-five XP. Oh, I lost sanity off that, he says. Why is it called a loveworm? I don't know. I kill a bunch more, but still I'm retreating into the chamber with the piled-up skulls and the sign. I'll run out of ammunition. My sword will be just as good. I run about jabbing and slicing at the worms, smearing the ground with their sticky green blood. And then I hear Tongi scream in agony. He slipped on the blood and ice and is lying on the floor as his body is buried by the squirming caterpillars. They bite and burrow into him. He screams and screams. They cover him. They force their way into his mouth, biting holes in his eye sockets and ears so they can enter in there. I don't dare shoot. So I cut and slash at them as carefully as I can. I kill lots, but Tongi is looking in a serious state. Then I hear a voice, Get from my realm. Abandoning my sword for a second, I reach down and grab. I'm trying to pry the worms from Tongi, but they're already eating him, and his mouth foams green and red as the worms enter and delve down his throat. You there, leave my realm. Emerging from the dark tunnel is a woman dressed in black with smeared mascara, and blood-red lipstick. She's wearing a tight basque and black leggings with thigh-high boots. She has on elbow-length opera gloves with glittering diamond rings over the fingers. I am the Lady of Sorrows, and I will kill you if you do not leave. But I'm looking at Tongi. He stopped twitching now, but the worms are inside his body making him writhe with their movement. Tongi has gone cold. He's dead. Forever. The love worms have killed him. You see something horrific. Sanity now, seventy out of a hundred. 